Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. And uh, let's now welcome our guest, Mr. J.D. Johnson. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, and good morning to our oh, viewers Jesus. all over the world. Thank God. Thank it's God Friday. Is... <laughs> <laughs> Daily Sun. I took it out of your mouth. <laughs> Daily Sun newspaper. The headline reads, Nigeria's democracy at risk. British government warns says 2023 election under threat, violence eroding people's livelihoods. That's according to the governors. Save Nigeria from collapse. Christian Association of Nigeria urges Buhari again, declares seven day prayers. Ogo Assembly passes anti-open grazing bill. COVID-19 Delta variants now in Nigeria. That's according to the NCDC. Nude video or Hakim knows fate September 27th as police arrest complainants in court. Airlines owe federal government agencies 37 billion naira. That's according to Sirica. Rumble in Imo Assembly over suspension of six lawmakers. Senate ignores protests. Screens Loretta Onoche for INEC job. All right, and uh, let's move over to the Nigerian Tribune. Let's see what stories we can find. Uh, the big one there says, PDP mocks Onoche as she denies membership of APC. Also on the Tribune, fireworks uh, in the Senate that has screening for INEC job. Ni Nigeria imports 2.2 million tons of fish annually. And beam of Lagos building collapses, kills a five-year-old boy. Also on the Nigerian Tribune, gunshots at Imo House of Assembly, six lawmakers suspended. Ogun Assembly passes anti-grazing bill, prescribes, uh, uh, prescribes three-year jail term for offenders. Also, Ibrahim Mago loses out as 167 police officers get promotion. COVID-19, Delta variant detected in Nigeria, says the NCDC. And also, airlines to refund full uh, fares to passengers after two hours delay, says the federal government. Laments airlines debt of 37 billion naira. Ex-South African President Zuma begins 15-month jail term. <coughs> An autumn to invite Buhari to commission projects. That's also on the Nigerian Tribune. That's all we have. On the Nation newspaper, eminent Nigerian says military force alone can't end insecurity. Abdul Salami, Fai Emil, along others, give tips. We need new tactics, says CDS General Irabo. UK warns on danger ahead of 2023. Passengers entitled to fair refund in cases of flight delays, says Sirica. COVID-19 Delta variant in Nigeria. Traveler tests positive. PDP slates congresses for Lagos or your Oshun jostle for posts begin. FIRS goes for 1.8 trillion naira tax liability from multi-choice coffers. Firm says we will resolve issue. War converses reduction of cement prices and... Buhari's aide, Onoche, tells senators, I left APC since 2019. There's a picture here of a crowd with um, the supposed coffin of um, um, TB Joshua. And it reads, tearful farewell at TB Joshua's line in states. Also on the Nation newspaper, Akira Dulu orders shutdown of clubs by midnight. Four die of food poison in Quara. On the Punch newspapers, parents panic as bandits threaten starvation, demand 30 bags of rice. The list uh, the bandits had, um, you have put out include uh, imported rice, 10 bags, local rice, 20 bags, beans, 20 bags, maggi, 10 cartons, 10 kegs of oil. Oh, okay. Wow. This is very it's shocking, actually, and really sad. They're demanding food stuff. I, I didn't know bandits were also chefs. <laughs> well, and that's with regards to the Kaduna Baptist School students uh, story, a kidnap. All right, diesel prices, uh, price surges to 290 naira a litre as crude rises to $74 a barrel. UNICEF orders 220 million COVID-19 vaccines for Nigeria and 54 others. On a chair contradic uh, contradicts, uh, a fit of it says, I stopped APC membership in 2019. We're going to stop there so we can quickly get into this conversation. A lot of the stories are repeated. Um, Mr. Jide Johnson, welcome once again. Please um, go ahead with any of the stories you want to start with. Well, let's start with Nigerian democracy at risk. 
according to the British government, that 2023 election is also at risk. And the question you begin to ask is, and we don't need the Sutia to tell us that we are not adequately prepared for 2023 election. One, there is no electoral act that will that that will guide the conduct of the election in 2019. Um, various excuses were made for the president by all at sundry and across all strata and sector of the Nigerian society that the time was too short for him to pass the for him to assent to the electoral bill that has been passed by the eighth national assembly. Now we have the ninth national assembly inaugurated since June 2019. This is July 2021, two years after there's no electoral act. Then invariably um, we, the, 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 the loophole has already been set down for, for, for the process not to, to work out fine. And even the electoral act that is being bandied around the bill that the National Assembly is looking at, there are some contentious issues about um, the National Assembly stopping INEC from electronically transferring the result, which was part of the resolution of the 17 Southern, Southern governors that the, the National Assembly shouldn't put that in, 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 in the new bill that we formed the electoral act for 2023 election. So we don't need to see that. The APC has not held its own national convention. The APC is still being run by, which is the ruling party, which is the party in government. It's still being controlled, controlled by, by, by theatrical committee. PDP has just announced the news for its own convention. So the party itself don't have internal democracy. They don't have respect for their own constitution, whether PDP or APC. If a party does not have respect for its own constitution as a party, when it wins power in an election, it will not have respect for the constitution of Nigeria. It's just the basic truth. The satiety begins at home. If you are lawless at home, you'll be lawless outside. So if you don't respect the, 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 the provisions of the constitution of your own party, when you win power and control government, you will not have respect for the constitution, for the constitution of, 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 of Nigeria. So everybody is there, it's, it's, it's clear, the loopholes are there, the lacuna are there, that are we really serious that want to have elections in 20, 2023? Let's wait and see, but the indications are there that um, we, are not, we are not serious. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the story of, um, of by Courtney, Eric here, and other people in the aviation sector, owning federal government, well, 37 billion. The question you ask is that how, how did that happen? If you read that to the story of uh, multi choice that are developed in the course of this week, you begin to wonder at this, all of us, most of us that are watching this program and those of us that are, that are facilitating this program now, I'm sure we pay our taxes because our taxes are deducted from the source. It is pay as you earn. Now you will begin to wonder are these people not paying their taxes? Or are they paying their taxes and their taxes are going are not remitted to the government they are going to the pocket of private individual because you begin to wonder how would 37 you are expecting a revenue i can't imagine that at the end of the month i know what i'm being paid by my by my employer and at the end of, at the end of the month i'm not getting my salary yet i'm still working and i work to the point of more than 10 years not collecting salary that means that probably i'm helping myself out from that system so some people must have been helping themselves out with money that is due to, to the nation. Uh, the other story that is related to that is, is, is the injustice and the suffering. If you travel outside Nigeria and you see that the way you are treated when you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you take airline, and the way you are treated locally when you take airline by the, by the airline operator, it's as if you are, you are, you are on your own. I, 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 a, a flight was canceled in 2019 till date. I have not, I've not gotten a refund. I've, read, I've written letters. I've written letters to, to um, the airline. The, the airline, they have, they, have not, they have not given me a refund. Now, the minister is now saying that you are entitled to a refund even if your flight is delayed. Not to even talk of the flight, the flight, the flight um, be, 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 being, being cancelled. So what step beyond the pronouncement? What step did the minister put in place to ensure that the regulatory body ensure that what step beyond the pronouncement is, is making um, now, what steps are we taking to, to address that, that
that particular issue. When you travel locally, we should be we should be one of the most enjoyable experience. You go through heaven, and it is easier for a camera to go to the eyes of the needle than for you to travel locally in Nigeria and enjoy your flight because flight are cancelled, they are delayed at we and at whims and at caprices that um, God will 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 help us concerning that. Another story is the story of Ogun State passing the anti-gracing law. And you know the Southern Governor met in the course of this week, and part of their resolution is that they set a September one yeah. a September one deadline for the passing of and let's see how it goes, whether this law will be enforced. We said there are enough there are there are, there are, there are, there are enough laws in, 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 in the land that will deal with some of the socio economic issues that we have. But the challenge which you have is um, is, is, is right. enforced. Also speak on the, link that's, the Loretta Onoche okay. controversy. That's that's uh, where I'm going. If I link that story of Loretta with Loretta Onoche's um, um, screening with that of what the British government has won us with, you, you, you think probably our senators um, don't have common sense. You think so? That probably they don't have common sense. This thing is, is, is very, very clear. And then most uh, 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 our elected officials, you think that they think we are fools. It's, it's clear that you cannot be an INE commissioner if you are a member of a political party. If you are a member of a political you can't just come up and wake up and tell us that, oh, I resign the membership of that party. Even the person that nominated that person, once that issue became a public out, there's a public outcry against our nomination. You withdraw our nomination. You withdraw our nomination. Is she the only one that could be an chairman? It's very clear whether she's still a member or not a member of the APC. It's very, very clear that she's partisan. It's very, very clear that she has operated a blog and she has used different med media platform to project express our partisanship and such a person cannot become an independent arbiter now if it is just now two years to the election that you are now just screening any commissioner that you should have appointed it portends danger that the the british government has pointed out and if the senator should go ahead to screen her and ratify a nomination I tell you, they, are, they will be a disgrace to themselves, a disgrace to their family, and a disgrace to this nation. And history will put them in the rightful place they belong to. If they should take a key from Jacob Zuma. Jacob Zuma was vice president in South Africa for eight years. Jacob Zuma was president for eight years. Today, Jacob Zuma has begun 15, 15 months jail term in South Africa. People should know that there are, there are consequences for their action. If they think that they own this country and they can get away with it, they should remember that um, um, I forgot it, this Liberian president was once a president. They should also remember that an Ivorian president is facing issue concerning his, his misconduct while, while he was while while he was president of 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 Kudeva. So as far as I'm concerned, let them screen her, let them make her INEC 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 commissioner. I don't know how this president lost controversy with his nomination. There was a time when the acting <coughs> INEC chairman was allegedly accused of being the cousin to the to the to the president. There are there are, there are millions of Nigerians with better CV than Loretta uh, Loretta Anoche that 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 has shown over time that is she's overtly partisan, unconscious, and that has used on 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 on. on, on Okay. I don't want Mr. Mr. Gide Johnson. For the type of language she's used to describe people. She's used to describe the okay. the, the, the the opposition. Mr. Johnson, not, let's let's yeah, let's now turn to security matters. In Kaduna State, you know, there's been a spate of kidnappings. Another one um, occurred on Tuesday, or on Wednesday rather. But on the Punch newspaper, the headline reads: Kaduna Baptist School students. Parents panic as bandits threaten starvation, demands 30 bags of rice, amongst others. Also, that kidnapping I mentioned that, that occurred on Wednesday, the bandits are demanding for 180 million naira. And regarding this one, the parents say that, um, you know, they're they basically left to their fates. The government is not saying anything about it. And uh, it's the school uh, management has asked the parents to contribute whatever they can. So parents 
are now crowdfunding amongst themselves to send money to the bandits or to send foodstuffs to the bandits. I mean, what, what story does that really tell of a country uh, such as this and of the government in Kaduna? And the government in the nation. You know, last week we were talking about how sophisticated uh, we, the government intercepted um, Nam Dekano and how, in the, in the course of the night, how the DSS raided the room of Sunday. I think uh, they should use that technology, they should use that intellect, they should use that intelligence because how are they going to make delivery of all of these food items to 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 the bandits? You call them bandits, I call them terrorists. Because the is a reign of terror on the parents. The government has left the parents alone. You know, the governor of Cardinal State said he is not is not is not going to negotiate with, with with any bandit. And he even said which is which is an indictment on his part when it was when it was when he was interviewed, when he said that um, the bandits um, issue is even better than Nam Dikano's Nam Dikano's agitation and the rest of it, what is he doing? Is he encouraging or inciting um, more banditry in the, in the country? People should know that when they are given position of responsibility, they are given position of authority. There is a responsibility that comes with it. The opposite of responsibility is irresponsibility, and he has demonstrated that is irresponsible. Is an irresponsible government that will not respond to the needs of its citizenry that will be left alone to, to handle that. We had the Greenfell, in the Greenfell University students that were kidnapped, the parents said they contributed money, hundreds of millions, to, 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 to secure the release of their children. And they were being blamed by the government, they were left alone by the government, nothing has come out of it. And the bandit will be encouraged to do to, to do that. And there is a consistent pattern. Consistent pattern of of if it's the other way around, we'll have read religious and ethnic issue into it. We'll have read religious and ethnic issues into it. Where are most of these people that are kidnapped? Where are they from? What's their faith? If you begin to begin to to pigment and begin to play identity politics that we love playing in this country. When when the shoe is when the shoe is on the other foot, you, you begin to wonder that oh why is government not paying attention? It's it's, it's very very clear that the level of intelligence gathering, the state of our security is insecure, and there is a high level of incompetence on the part of those that have been charged with responsibility of protecting lives and property in this country. It's a constitutional matter. The government is is required to protect the lives and property of its citizenry. When you fail to do that, we should be bold enough to tell them you are failing. So as far as I'm concerned, the government of Kaduna, the government of Kaduna State have failed to protect the lives and property of the people in, the, in, in, in Kaduna State. The federal government of Nigeria has failed in protecting its citizenry from that. Can you imagine a citizen of the United States of America, a British citizen kidnapped? Some that were kidnapped in, in, in 2019 in Maiduguri, they sent they send an American Marine to come and rescue them. They rescued every one of them. Let's call a spade a spade. It means that there's a collapse of government. Probably a state of emergency should be declared in Kaduna. And the governor should be sent home to go and, to go and relax. And then you appoint a sole administrator to look at, at the other. That itself is that it's dedicated to democratic principle. Because we want democratic governance at every level. But you get whatever you are, you deserve as 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 a government when you don't actively participate in the political process, or when you allow the political process to be manipulated by people with selfish with selfish interests. And the process is when you want to appoint someone that has a questionable character, someone that has demonstrated partisanship to become an INEC commissioner. What type of decision would that would that uh, would that person take with respect, uh, Johnson. With respect to, 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 to that? Um. It's um, really, really heartbreaking, um, you know, some of these stories. And, of course, the analysis is you know, still very, very heartbreaking when uh, some of these facts you know, hit you mentally. But thank you very much for yeah. this Friday morning. We let always appreciate you. Let me just quickly add this. You see, um, you said gunshot at Imo State House of Assembly. It's a society that rewards criminality. Somebody spearheaded the stealing of the coat of arms in the Nigerian Senate. Nobody was arrested. Nobody was prosecuted. They were rewarded. With, um, with with leadership position. Somebody climbed the fence of the National Assembly 
climbed the gate to jump into it, they were rewarded. So you, when you have when lawmakers are lawbreakers, this is the type of society we have. When you reward criminality, you get this type of uh, uh, society. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful Friday. Thank you, Mr. Um, Johnson. Thank you. Thank have you a very great much. day. Um, stay with us. So we'll take a short break when we come back. We'll tell you a little bit of uh, what happened on this day in history. I'm talking a little bit of tennis uh, this morning. And yes. that comes up. Yes, do stay with us.